Okay, there's no script today, so we'll just see how it goes. Today, you will learn how to read an EMF meter. Not just this EMF meter, but any EMF meter. Here's how it goes. Let's get started. Let's dive in and go right now. And be sure to stick to the end so you know how to get the free EMF protection table. This is how you know if you're in safe or unsafe areas, okay? I want you to have your own copy. So when you get an EMF meter, if you're not really familiar with what it is, you got one just because you want to start monitoring the signals traveling through your body, which I think is a very good thing. I applaud you on that one. Good show. You get it, it's a little bit confusing. There's some measurements that you may not understand. It's easy to get lost and be just like, I don't know how to use this. I'm just setting it down. I'm feeling all right. I'm feeling all right. We'll just pretend this EMF thing isn't a thing. Don't do that. It's a thing. It's really the thing. For some more than others, that's totally true. I'm gonna teach you how to read the readings and know if you're in safe or unsafe levels. So let's dive in. So if you have a new EMF meter, you might be a little bit confused about how to read things. And I have been there. It doesn't make sense. It's like, you should just show me a reading, but it's like jumping all over the place. And I don't know. I don't know if it's safe or not safe. I know it's coming. What am I supposed to do? So today you'll know. So just a little note on EMF meters. They can come in a different ways of displaying the information. Sometimes it's a light that just shows avoid, good, or not so good in the middle. And I just typically don't want that because I want to know exactly what it is. Like I want to decide what my level is. And then there's other ones like the Tri-Field TF2, which is really simple and nice, but you do toggle between electric fields and magnetic fields. But on this one, it's nice because it has them all in one, one display, which I, I really like, but it's a little more technical. So if you have a hard time with like navigating menus, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go here. I'd get a Tri-Field just, just for starters. And know that these kind of all-in-one meters they are not as sensitive and precise as a professional set. A professional will have an EMF meter for each type, magnetic field, radio frequency, electric field, and for dirty electricity or EMI. And a lot of times the really cheap ones, they are not accurate. Like if, you, if you're getting a really cheap one, it will tell you when EMF is around. You got this radiation coming from something, but it's typically not quite on. And actually it's probably way off. Another thing you have to be careful of is with EMF meters, especially more of the consumer level ones, is you just need to be careful about light, heat, and even if you're holding one like this and you're rubbing your feet around while you're walking on the floor, that can cause static electricity and then you'll get your electric fields like going like all crazy and you're like, oh no, I'm out. don't worry about that. Be calm. This is the meter you've been looking for. And then other meters, they will actually show a reading, but how do you know which readings are actually safe and not safe? Let's jump to my screen real quick. A lot of times the EMF meter will come with some guidelines and they're just guidelines. Don't take them at face value. You need to do some research and decide for yourself. For this example, the GQ EMF 390, it came with this card right here. This is not too bad, but you can tell it was written by a scientist because well, what, what do you do with all that stuff on the bottom? This stuff, like, this is confusing. What is this little you with a tail? Like, for real, it's like, I have to go and research this stuff. Oh, this is supposed to be helpful. One little you with a tail over a W over a centimeter squared is equal to 10 M's W over a meter squared. Very helpful. Today, I'm not gonna dive deep into all the ins and outs. I'm gonna give you some tips and then you will be able to easily, easily know if you're in a safe area or an unsafe area and you can make your decision on where that line should be drawn. But I have to say this, this card is somewhat helpful for starters. The thing is you want your EMF levels to be very low and like what's the lowest level you really want it to? And so what I did is I took this card here and I made it so you compare against what EMF professionals say, one like Jeremy Johnson says you keep it super low. And for him and other EMF sensitive people, you wanna keep it really low, 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 low. Um, if you're not as much, it's good to know when you're in uh, unsafe levels and when you're in okay and, and definitely where you wanna keep your sleeping levels at. So for EMF sensitive people, they wanna keep it really low all the time. Your bedroom is the place where you wanna keep it really, really low. Let your body rejuvenate. Before I jump into this spreadsheet, I wanna talk about these measurements. So let's go here. I'm going to zoom in on this guy. Let's look at this real quick. One U with a, a little tail over a W over centimeter squared. So I know what a centimeter squared is. I know centimeters really small. And if it's a square, it's like this. Okay. So just know that, okay, we're looking at a little square centimeter. This, this meter is measuring things on a plane. It kind of gets it at an angle, whatever angle it is. And that's a good reason why you should actually kind of move your meter around to give your sensors some other data, different places to look at, but it's looking at this little centimeter and it's going to do its best to tell you how much energy from a certain frequency is inside a little centimeter. Frequencies travel the same speed, but at different wavelengths, right? And so EMF meters vary in what wavelengths they will measure. And that's something to keep in mind with an EMF meter is you want to have a nice spectrum of wavelengths it can measure, like extremely low frequencies, like uh, electricity, 
up to radio frequency like Wi-Fi, and then also magnetic fields. So really don't worry too much about these units. Just, just know that you know, it's trying to measure a little centimeter and a certain amount of energy in there at a certain wavelength, okay? And depending on how much energy it, there is, it might jump from this unit over to this unit because it's trying to display it without getting really, really long. And you'll see that on the spreadsheet. In certain areas, like the, there's just no room to display this, so it's gotta jump to a different unit. But the little U with a tail is a microwatt, and that's a watt. So that's micro, and the W is a watt. And then over here, the M is a milliwatt. And these come in basically differences of a thousand. Don't worry too much. I get lost in the numbers. You'll see. You just have to know, look at your display and see what it's displaying. And then you'll come to the chart and be like, okay, I know where I'm at now. It's either in centimeter squared or it's in a meter squared, like a square meter, where it's trying to display this information, right? And so if it's, if it's like a very low, if like if there's not a lot, it'll jump up to a meter because there's less, less energy in the meter. And it's like, here's what it is in a meter. If it was trying to do it within a centimeter, it's just so small, it'd just be a long string of zeros and a number. So depending on how intense the, the EMF is, it'll jump between giving you a meter squared and a centimeter squared on some devices. It will on this one. You can kind of choose things, but it still likes to try and display it. So if you think about it in the terms of a plane in like a little square centimeter versus a square meter, you can look at this and be like, okay, one microwatt in a centimeter squared. So there's one microwatt in this little thing if I made that a meter, then that would be 100 centimeters times 100 centimeters, 10,000 microwatts inside of that meter squared. So what happens is instead of microwatts, we move it over to milliwatts. So instead of 10,000, we drop off three zeros because from a microwatt to a milliwatt, it's an increment of 1,000. So there's 10 milliwatts per meter squared. If that's not confusing, then you're amazing because I still get confused looking at this stuff. That's kind of how it works. Let's jump over to the spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet here is actually my gift to you. Hopefully you can use this. This one, uh, when you, so th this spreadsheet is in the description of this video. You can click it and then you can actually come and make a copy for yourself or you can put comments in this one because I know some of you are more technical than I am. What I did here is if you look on the top, these are my recommended levels from my research. You need to go do your own research. And these are conservative, like not super high. And then down here, this is the GQ EMF 390 recommendations. So basically, if you have a comment you wanna make, you can just right click and then just put comment. See down here, I'm gonna zoom in. See that comment right there? Make a comment. And as you look at this, you're like, whoa, 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 EMF, it's in, there's like three different colors. What's going on here? Well. EMF is typically measured in three different sections. You have your electric fields, magnetic fields, and then you have your radio frequency. As you can see here, there are three different levels. And I broke them out into different measurements that I have found when using my EMF meter. And there's actually one in here that, that was new to me that I had to kind of look up, which is nanowatts per centimeter squared. And you can just basically look at your EMF meter Come here, have it printed off, and just know if you're in the low, acceptable, high need to reduce, or just avoid it all costs. Don't stay there very long. I'm, you need to reduce it too, but don't stay there very long. And low is basically where you want your sleeping to be. This is where you want to be. So let's walk through this real quick. Let's start with electric fields. So electric fields are measured in volts per meter. So think about a meter. There's a volt in there. You want it to be zero to one for best. One to 10 is acceptable. And again, this all depends on you. Like sometimes these acceptable levels are unacceptable for other people. Once you get to 10 to 50, you want to reduce anything greater than 50, just avoid that. But when we look at recommendations with, that came with this EMF meter, zero to three was normal. Three to 50, better check that regularly. Don't be there too long. Well, 50 plus, don't stay too long. Greater than 500. See, there's a pretty big discrepancy when you look at this. And we look at, so once we look at magnetic fields here, these are measured in milligauss or micro tesla. That's what I found online. Let me know if we need to add a different one in here. Drop it in the comments. Happy to add it in. But basically, you can look through this and be like, okay, 0 to 0 0.5, I'm doing pretty good. That's good. Once you start getting over 1 milligauss or 0 0.1 micro tesla, then you want to start looking at those things. Once you get to radio frequency, it is there's so much range that 
there's a greater variety of units you might see. You just have to pay attention whether or not you're a meter squared or a centimeter squared, and if it's a little m, which is a milliwatt, the u with the tail, microwatt, milliwatt, microwatt, and then this is nano, nanowatt. You know, if it's measuring over here, if it's greater than 10,000 microwatts per meter squared, your EMF meter is not going to be able to show ten, the number 10,000 most likely, and so it would drop down into the centimeter squared, kind of trying to measure at a smaller level so it can display the information. To keep things simple, all you really have to do is find the reading on your EMF meter, check here to see where it lines up if it's in one of these levels, and then if it's too high, the top tips are create distance or turn the EMF off. It might be coming from an appliance or a light or your Wi-Fi router. You can turn off your Wi-Fi and use wired internet. You can distance yourself. And then once you either mitigate through distance and turning off, you can look into blocking if that's something that you need. And if you'd like to make a copy of this spreadsheet with these safe and unsafe levels, all you have to do is go up to the top. Let me show you options. I hid the options just so you could see it a little better. But you go to file, make a copy. So once you make a copy, click that link right there, and then you will be able to share it to yourself when you have your own copy. If you want free EMF gear delivered to your door, check below in the video description. We give out free EMF protective gear every single month to our loyal subscribers. So join in and enjoy, get some good information on protecting yourself from EMF. I hope this has been helpful in how to read an EMF meter. Drop in the comments if there's any questions you have, any follow-ups we need to do. I'm still learning, just going on this journey with you. I know there's a lot of really smart people out there. Let me know if I missed anything and we will follow up on it. Catch you later. Did you like this? Did you like the spin move at the beginning? I'll just I'll just do one without a spin move. No spin move this time. We'll just go straight into it. Does that sound okay? How to read an EF meth? EF EF meth. I'm gonna do one more intro just just to be more like a. Hey, there's this intro. Hello, welcome. Today we'll be showing you how to read an EMF meter. Let's go. Did you like that one? That was a pretty good one, right? This is gonna be all over the place. Here we go. Brain dump, and then you organize it. You organize it after. I'm pointing at myself, really. And thank you so much. Catch you later.